Bilderbeck has calculated how long we have got until Martians take over the entire world. I think ever since I was a young fan of science fiction movies, I've always been very interested in the concept of uh, what happens when this planet is invaded. And, you know, over the, over the last, uh, you know, four or five decades, uh, Hollywood has invaded planet Earth dozens of times. But War of the Worlds, you know, sort of touches a nerve in the sense that it really is about more than science fiction. It reflects a lot of our post-9-11 fears, but it also reflects another impulse that we really are human beings and we do come together to help each other survive, especially when we have a common enemy. When I was growing up, I remember watching both in movie theaters and later on television films like The Earth vs. the Flying Saucers, It Came from Outer Space, Invaders from Mars, This Island Earth, certainly the original George Powell version of War of the Worlds. And I always was very interested in the fact that these films came out in response to our fears about the Soviet Union and a possible nuclear war someday between America and the Soviets. And those films were analogous and very metaphorical and preyed on our fears of being attacked from another country. Also being attacked from the sky, nuclear missiles raining down on America. Now, in the shadow of 9-11, it felt that War of the Worlds had a special significance. I mean, this film it touches mostly on how this much catastrophe can bring about uh, that much healing. But, um, you know, our world has gone through a lot of growing pains and we're in a whole different mindset. So, for the most part, I think I, I made the picture because I thought that this story's time had come again. And I'll say, Tom, decided to go to your end. Right there, that's all I need. That's yeah. perfect. Put it right on there, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, Minority Report was a dream come true for me to be able to work with Steven Spielberg. I grew up watching his movies, studying his movies. You know, I often tease him, I know your movies better than you do. <laughs> but we'd finished Minority Report, and we sat there and we said, okay, so what, what are we going to do next together? And he mentioned three movies, and War of the Worlds was the third one, and we both looked at each other, and the lights went on, and uh, we said, oh, you know, that's it. There was, you know, tremendous excitement, and then that day we just put it together and said, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to make this movie together. And then... Uh, Steven's worked with David Kep before, a great writer, and I've worked with David Kep before. Uh, and uh, the three of us just sat down in January and talked about the story. And I wanted to play a father in a movie and have, uh, you know, a character. I like the, you know, blue-collar character. I lived in Jersey twice. And David Kep just really rolled with that. Actually, the first conversation we had, uh, I remember I, I, um, I took a lot of notes as I was reading the book, and one of the things I did is I made a list of all the things I felt we should not have in the movie. And if we could agree on that, I thought it was a big step toward making the movie in a, in a fresh way. Because alien invasion scenarios have been done before. You know, we've seen the first War of the Worlds and a number of others. So we made a list of things that we wouldn't put in the movie. You know, things like no destructions of famous landmarks, um, no, uh, no shots of Manhattan getting the shit kicked out of it, because enough already with that, you know. No, uh, no shots of uh, generals standing around a large map pushing, you know, ships with big sticks into place. Um, no TV news cameras, no news crews out photographing destruction and then being destroyed by it. Um, you know, we just went through all of what we thought were the, the cliches of the genre and, and vowed not to do those because what that left us with was trying something that was a, a truly first-person account, which is what the book is. Um, I think the genius of Wells' book is he doesn't try to tell everything that's going on in the world. He sticks almost exclusively to his hero's experience and what happened to him and what it felt like from his point of view. This isn't one of my movies where suburbia is invaded by benign, benevolent extraterrestrials. Uh, this is really more of a story, uh, less about my own upbringing in suburbia and more about a, a kind of working class existence and how this kind of deadbeat dad, I hate to use that word, but he's a little bit negligent toward his kids. He's a divorced man. He hasn't seen his kids for six, seven, eight weeks since the last visit. And uh, when his wife finally says, look, you're taking him for this weekend because I've got to go see my mother in Boston, 
this tremendous cataclysmic event happens, which is very informative, you know, as to who Tom Cruise's character really is. It's my son. Where's my son? Hold down, man. The world is uh, basically coming to an end, and what is he going to do? That challenge of a guy who has really only thought about himself, and now at this point, he's he has to become that friend. He must become that parent, or they're not going to make it. It's it's you know the story is are they going to make it? You know, great science fiction has tremendous characters and is still relevant. You know, when the classic pieces of science fiction are still relevant because it hits the universal human themes. It is a cautionary tale, in a way. You know, we're far more dangerous to ourselves than the, you know, huge extraterrestrial invaders. It's very, it's quite profound. And therefore, what's in your heart and what's in your soul and your family and your children and being the best father or mother or brother or sister that you can be. That's, that's what counts. I think this film, like Close Encounters and Private Ryan, is very hyper real. And I think that's where, if we play our cards right, it's going to have its most profound effect in, a, in affecting an audience and truly perhaps unsettling an audience in that it is being played for the hyper reality. And then into this reality comes something that is beyond the imagination, that is you know, very scary to look at and certainly you know, almost impossible to imagine. So we imagine it for you. And uh, it, it's, it's, this movie's been a real trip for me. It's the first time I've really you know, jumped with both eyes open and both feet directly in the center of a science fiction horror film.